Molly called out to them. Uh, guys? Did you find something weird? Trixie called back. Kinda. Trixie and Feeny trotted over, excited to see what Molly had found. Molly had found a dead body. Or at least, that's what it appeared to be. The man was lying face down in the sand. The most noticeable thing about the body, aside from it appearing dead, was its bizarre hair. It was a deep neon purple with bright red strands coming out from a part in the top like seaweed, almost as though some sort of poisonous deep sea creature was nestling on its head. Are you sure he's dead? Fenica shivered. Molly fiddled her boots together. I don't know. Well, did you ask? Molly looked down at the body. He didn't say. Me! Trixie smiled. I call the brain. <laughs> I call the police! Fenica whipped out her phone so fast that it almost flew into the water. Trixie put her sweater flipper on Feeny's shoulder. Hang on. Why? We should see if he has any stuff first. Like a wallet. Or a brain. Trixie ignored Feeny's good-natured protests and leaned down to inspect the corpse. She picked up a nearby stick and lifted up the edge of the body to inspect it like a mechanic checking under a car. There were a number of nudibranchs stuck to the man's underside attempting to use him as a hat. Well, I did say weirdest or funniest. Trixie sighed. She handed the lip balm up to Molly without looking. You win. Suddenly, the body sputtered to life like an old lawnmower, coughing loudly. A nudibranch shot out of its windpipe and fell back into the sea. It shouted at them. <laughs> win! All three girls screamed. <coughs> the body screamed back. Shrieked Fenica. The body flipped around to look behind itself. Zombie? Where? It tossed out a hand as if throwing a tennis ball. Molly was the only one who noticed, but for just a second, something like a little black string appeared from the body's hand. Then it vanished, like ink dissipating in seawater, disappearing as quickly as it came. The body looked at its palm. Hmm, exclaimed the body. That's not good. This guy's not a zombie. Trixie shrugged. Too much skin. He's clearly some kind of squid vampire. A squid pyre. Or maybe a baby Cthulhu. Aha! Uh -huh. I am afraid you are mistaken! The man stood up. I am no undead creature. I am a famous and powerful wizard! Behold! The wizard turned and cast his hand out towards the sea dramatically over and over again as though he were flinging a series of invisible frisbees. He grunted loudly with each toss. If any spells were happening, the girls couldn't see them. They stared at the man. He was about 20-something years old, which to a group of 12-year-olds was the same as being 40. The self-proclaimed wizard had a dusky complexion with an undertone of ash coloring his skin, as well as a pair of jet-black sunglasses atop his pointed nose. He wore a purple jacket that might have looked snazzy once, but now it was dulled and crisscrossed with patches, including a heart-shaped patch over his right breast, the wrong side. The ramshackle jacket combined with the red fingerless gloves he wore gave him the appearance of a drifter or some strange purple hobo who might travel by boxcar. They wouldn't be all that surprised to see a bindle wash up on shore next to him. Well, he turned back to them. It seems that my magic is in less than top form today. Must be some kind of surface interference from the surface world. Phoenix's eyes lit up. She stepped out from behind the safety of her friends. Magic? She chirped. You say that you're magic? Of course I'm magic! What kind of self-respecting wizard isn't? He flicked some seaweed off of his face. Then this is most fortuitous indeed! I am Fenica Felicity the 15th of the Felicity lineage. Perhaps you have heard of us? No! The wizard grinned. Fenica seemed unbothered by this and politely returned his smile. Well, my family has been around since ancient times. Every few generations, we are fated to do battle with an ancient witch. And the only way we can defeat her is by bringing together a group of magical girls. I have currently assembled three magical girls, and I'm on the lookout for two more. If we cannot find them, then it may be the end of the world! Would you and or someone you know be interested? Magical girls, you say? The wizard looked over the trio with renewed interest. His eyes danced behind his sunglasses. The lenses were inky black, but somehow his eyes themselves shone brightly through the darkness, like a candle in a tunnel or a demon watching you sleep from some hidden corner of your room. Do you have any special powers? 
I can make neato potions. Trixie offered. Yes, but those aren't real. Finica stepped in front of her. So, more magical girls would really be appreciated. Hey, my potions are too real. And you can't do magic either, so what do you know? Well... Finica stammered. I may not be magic exactly, but that's okay. You don't need to be magic to be a magical girl. You, by definition, do. Trixie frowned. No, not true. T technically, real magical girl powers only manifest when the time truly calls for it. The time just hasn't called for it yet. That's all. The most important requirement is that you are pure of heart. She turned to the wizard. Would you consider yourself to be pure of heart? Ha! Ah! He barked. There was an extremely long, awkward pause. The wizard grinned at them silently like a glitched character in a video game. Face unmoving, eyes unblinking. Molly was the one to break the silence. She had been hanging in the back watching this strange man like a hawk from the beginning. He was weird and way too friendly and probably like 40 years old. Gross! This was exactly the kind of person street smarts for kids had warned them about. She grabbed her friends by the hand and began dragging them away from the beach. Uh, sorry. We have a class, so we have to go now. Bye. Wait. Hold on a moment there. The wizard called. If we are indeed both magic, then it would be best for us to stay in touch, don't you think? His lanky stride caught up to them almost immediately. That makes sense to me. Feeny beamed. Feeny. Molly hissed. Very well! The stranger bellowed. My name is Rick Shades. Would you like to? He extended his gloved hand to Finica. Be my friend. Something was wrong about the way he held out his arm. It had an unusual weight to it, as if it was traveling in slow motion, like a car in bullet time just before an accident. Mm. Feeny deliberated. Molly reached out to stop her, but it was too late. The moment that Phoenix grabbed the wizard's hand, the sky tore open like blue construction paper. Beyond the sky was nothing. Nothing after nothing came bursting out. With a crack and a bang, a bolt of pure black lightning speared down, striking their handshake in a flash of cold, dark light. Black electricity crackled across their fingertips, dancing like spider legs until it spun itself together into a single string. The string wriggled and writhed. Then, all of a sudden, stretched out as taut as an arrow. One end of the arrow shot out and pierced through Phoenix's heart. The other end speared the wizard's chest as an elated smile broke across his face like a fissure in the earth. His eyes turned as black as his sunglasses. They glowed as he flung back his head, cackling like a maniac in triumph. The pact is sealed! <laughs> Anyways, it's nice to meet you. He smiled. Blink. The world was back to normal. The sky was a beautiful, clear blue. Distant, cheerful families could be heard laughing upwind on the beach. The wizard's eyes weren't glowing anymore, and Finica no longer had a charcoal spear through her tiny chest. What? Did that actually just happen? No! Said the wizard, removing his hand from Finica and pointing it towards the others. Who else wants to be friends? Molly and Trixie both took a step back in unison, dragging Feeny along with them like a rag doll. Feeny, are you okay? Molly stammered. Oh, why, she's more than okay. The wizard grinned. She has a new friend. Me, Rick Shades, wizard extraordinaire. What did you do to her? Trixie demanded. Why, nothing at all. She just helped me regain a little bit of my magic. He lifted his finger and it crackled with black lightning, making a noise like static from an old television set. It was the same inky string of magic Molly had briefly spotted before, but larger this time, more erratic and wild. After all, that's what friends are for! Did you steal her magic away? Molly frowned. I had magic to steal? Finica blinked. So I am a magical girl? Magical girl confirmed? Oh, no, 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 nothing like that. Seeing as we are bosom companions, I suppose I could tell you how this works. My epithet is soulmates. A crackle of black lightning echoed behind him to accentuate his reveal. Oh, goodness. Finica blushed. We're soulmates now? Yes! My. And here I spent my entire evening working late into the night decorating that new marriage binder for the museum sheep boy. 
Oh, well. If it's a wizard husband that fate hands me, then a wizard husband I shall have. Trixie wrinkled her nose and stuck out her tongue. Feeny, ew, he's like 40. <laughs> okay, wow, and also ouch, Rick said. First of all, I'm a dashing young guppy of but 20 years. Second, my power has nothing to do with romantic soulmates. It simply means that I keep my mates in my soul. I carry my friends with me in my heart. Literally. Here, let me show you. Finica, my best surface friend. Tell me, what can you do? Molly leaned in to whisper. Feeny! Don't tell him stuff about you. Remember what Street Smarts for Kids taught us? But Street Smarts only warned us about strangers. Mr. Rick is no stranger. He's my friend. We lightninged about it. Yes, I am a friend! Rick screamed. Trust me! Okay. Feeny smiled. Well, I don't mean to brag, but I am quite adept at schoolwork. Schoolwork! Yes! He leaned over to them. What is that? Molly tilted her head like a puppy. You don't know what schoolwork is? Lucky. Trixie grumbled. Finica opened her backpack and produced some of that night's homework along with an erasable pen. She handed them to Rick. Like these! This is language arts homework. There are a number of example sentences here. You're supposed to circle all the words with spelling or grammar mistakes. Ah, yes! Schoolwork. And my own this challenge for seventh graders may prove too much for me. But with the power of soulmates, anything is possible. A staticky noise filled the air. Black glowing light leaked out from behind the heart-shaped patch on Rick's jacket, and a matching black heart appeared on Phoenix's chest. Rick's eyes blanked out and roared with an unholy fire. He picked up the pen and, as if in a trance, began writing with a knowledge that was not his own. I before E, except after C, or oh, when sounding like A, as in neighbor or way! He cackled maniacally, a terrible, roaring cackle! Ah! <laughs> yes! Yes! The homework was utterly defeated. It never stood a chance. Wait a moment. Fenica gasped. You're using someone else's knowledge to do your homework? That's... that's cheating! No, it's not cheating. You're helping me. Whatever my friends can do, I can do. That's the power of friendship. He said the word friendship as though it were a poison that he had slipped in someone else's drink. No! She protested. If you are indeed a cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater, Rick Shades, then I am afraid that I... I cannot be friends with you! What? No! Thunder clapped and roared. The black string that bound Finica and Rick by the heart appeared again. He quivered and then shattered like so many pieces of glass. Rick fell to his knees, shaking like a wet puppy. My... my knowledge! It's... It's gone! Wait. Trixie lowered her eyelid. Your weakness is people not being friends with you? Rick began to cry big dumb tears into the sand. Aw. Molly said. He's a loser. Trixie squinted. I think we should throw this one back in the ocean. <laughs> Please! Weeped certified weenie Rick Shades. I can't go back. I used to have so many friends. I used to be so powerful. But now, now I'm nothing. I'm just a poor wizard with no magic left to his name. Oh, you poor dear! Feeny appeared at his side and patted his back. Tears were as contagious as a yawn for Finica, and they were streaming down her cheeks in instant waterfalls. If you promise me that you will reform your pumpkin-eating ways, then I would be honored to be your friend, Rick Shades. Fenica! He cried. My oldest and dearest companion. Thank you. I promise to never cheat on homework for a seventh grader again. That's all I wanted to hear. They both wept like idiots and hugged as a black spear re-pierced their hearts, forging their bond anew. Rick stood up and dusted the sand off of his dirty hobo pants. 
Now! Are either of you two feeling generous enough to be frenerous? Trixie hissed at him like an alley cat. <sighs> Come now, don't be that way. I've told you all about my powers, so why don't you tell me all of yours? In explicit detail. Well... Finica offered. Only one of us has an epithet. And we're not going to tell you who it is. Molly interrupted, using her powers to mute Feeny before she could ruin everything. Hmm. Rick grinned. No matter. I plan to be friends with all of you soon enough. <laughs> His head snapped from maniacal cackle to pleasant chat mid-sentence. Anyways, you said something about a winner? Huh? A winner! Win! Winning! Something about winning! That's what you said when I first woke up! Let me prove my worth to you guys. Prove that I'm friend-worthy. Who won something? I bet I could win it better than they did. I'm very good at winning. Then you will think I'm cool. I think you might need some punch-ups on your friendship speeches. Molly said. Winning? Trixie squinted, trying to figure out what this weirdo was talking about. Oh, you mean the prizes. We were putting these nudie branks that washed up on shore back in the water. Whoever finds the weirdest thing and saves the most nudie branks wins a treat. A treat? Rick's eyes widened like a dog hearing someone open a bag of kibble. Excellent! I have not eaten in days. Days? Asked the trio all at once. Yes! Oh, gosh. Molly fumbled through her pockets. Uh, uh, let me see if I have some granola bars or something. They all rummaged through their stuff, but nobody had any snacks. Molly juggled the little green tube of apple-flavored lip balm in her hands, and Rick pointed to it. What is that? Is that the treat? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah. This was the prize. I don't think you're supposed to eat it, though. Molly turned to Trixie. You can't eat lip gloss, right? Uh, I mean, it's candy flavored. Maybe you can eat it? I don't know. I might be a potionologist, but I'm no candies, doctor. Molly turned back to see Rick sprinting around the beach. He was scooping up armfuls of nudibranchs and tossing them back in the water at speeds even Trixie wasn't able to match. He was as gentle as possible with the nudibranchs, but he was clearly in a huge hurry. After a minute, he returned to the girls. I have saved 60 of these strange creatures! Do I win? Am I the winner? Do I get the winner's treat? Uh, so again, this is lip balm. Wow! Feeding me a bomb! Wow! Okay, okay! Rick shuddered with visible worry. Molly removed the cap and screwed the lip balm out to show him. No, a balm. Balm with an L. It's like lip stuff that you put on your lips. Wow, amazing! Thank you! Rick shouted, leaning forward and biting into the lip balm like it was a popsicle. Mm, bad! He was crying again. Uh, no, no! Don't swallow that! It is too late! Uh, uh... All four of them began shaking in fear. Was lip balm poisonous? They had no idea. Finica began hurriedly searching for the answer on her phone. Trixie was looking for literally anything in her backpack to eat, but all she had was some lint and her goopy purple potion. Is that a drink? Rick asked. I have also had nothing to drink for the last three days, except for salt water. On a related note, I think I may be dying. <sighs> okay, okay. Trixie sputtered. So this has lemonade in it, but it's also got hot sauce and has been sitting in my backpack for three days. I don't know what any of those things are, and I will trust your judgment implicitly. Rick smiled, reaching for the potion with all the self-awareness of a dog about to swallow a brownie. No! The Neo Trio shouted. Trixie snagged the bottle back. That's a potion of go away! Ah, I see. So the pink one is a witch. Glad you warned me. Wouldn't want my insides to go away, now would I? <laughs> he started a big belly laugh that fired out in bursts like cannon rounds. It was energetic, but entirely mirthless and more than a little off-putting. He stopped laughing very suddenly like a puppet whose puppeteer had severed the strings. Listen to me. We are friends, correct? Maybe? Molly answered hesitantly. Wonderful. In that case, please, my new friends... Do not let me die. Rick Shades fell face down on the ground and passed out, resuming his state as an unconscious body on the beach. The nudibranchs flocked at his side to turn him into a hat while the three little girls ran around like chickens, trying their best not to have a full-blown panic attack. 